Today we'll do the equivalent of a Hello World project in reinforcement learning. We'll get your development environment set up for RL coding and we'll code a basic RL task. You need a Python virtual environment manager like Anaconda or Miniconda. For this demo, I'm going to use Miniconda. If you don't have either one, go ahead and follow the instructions on the installation page and get it installed. Once it is installed, open your start menu type in Anaconda and pick the Anaconda prompt. Right now we're in the base Python environment. We need to create a new one for our reinforcement learning libraries. Conda create dash n to give it a name. I'll just call it RL hello world env. I want the virtual environment to use a specific version of Python. The two libraries that I'm going to install is Genasium and stable baselines 3. I want to make sure that the Python version that I select is compatible with both of those libraries. On Genasium, I'm going to their GitHub page. And it says here that it's good up to version 3.12. For stable baselines 3, I'll go to the installation and it's good with anything Python greater than 3.9. So 3.12 is the common denominator. I'll add this specific Python version to the virtual environment. Now let it install. Our Python virtual environment is installed. I'll use this command to activate it. I'll copy it. I'll paste it here. Notice on the left, I am in the virtual environment now. Now let's install Genasium. I'll copy this command, pip install Genasium. If you are on Linux or Mac, you can use the pip install gymnasium brackets all command and this will install the whole gymnasium package. However, for Windows, the installation is not that smooth. So I'll just install the base version of gymnasium first. And at the end, I'll give you a link to my other video on how to install the whole gymnasium package for Windows. I'll copy the command, come back to my command prompt, paste it. We're done with Genasium. Let's go to Stable Baselines 3. We were at the installation page, so I'll grab this command here. Paste and enter. We're good with Stable Baselines 3. Now let's open our code editor. You can use your favorite editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code. I have a empty folder here for my project. I'm gonna right click, show more options, open this folder in code. Here's my empty folder in VS code. Let me create a new file. I'll just call it hello.py. Going back to my gymnasium page, I'm going to click on basic usage. And I'll grab the code here. This is basic code to test that gym has been installed correctly. I'll paste it to my file. This code is using the Lunar Lander environment, but the one that we're using is going to be simpler. Let me scroll down to Classic Control. Click on Cardpole. The idea behind Cardpole is to train an agent. This black block here, which is supposed to be a cart attached to a pole, will train the agent to balance the pole without falling. Each one of these gymnasium environments has an ID. This is the Cardpole ID. I'll copy that, go back to VS Code. On line three, we're creating an instance of the environment. We'll pass in the carpool ID. Before I can run this code, I need to select the interpreter. Down here, I'm clicking on select interpreter. The virtual environment that we just created is our L Hello World environment. Select that. Now VS Code should be able to see the Genasium and Stable Baselines 3 library. Now I'm gonna hit F5 to run this code. You just saw that the carpool environment pop up and disappeared immediately. That's because the poll fell really quickly and the simulation ended. I'll comment out the line that terminates the while loop just so that we can see the environment for a longer period of time. I'm gonna run the code again. Okay, let me stop it. I'll bring this back. 
Before I explain this code, let's go through some terminology. The action space are the possible actions that Descartes can take. It's represented by 0 or 1, which is either to go to the left or go to the right. The observation space is the state of the environment. In this environment, it's defined as the position of the cart, how fast the cart is moving, the angle of the pole, how fast the angular velocity of the pole is. These four attributes combined is enough to define the current state of the environment. Each action taken is called a step and we're given a reward of plus one for every step taken while the pole has not fallen. An episode is the beginning to the end of one simulation. These are the conditions where the simulation ends. The pole reaching a certain number of degrees, the cart going off to the edge, also because it's possible to train an agent to balance the pole forever, there is a truncation condition that ends the episode. And that is if we're able to balance the pole for 500 actions. Now we can go back to the code. We start by creating an instance of the environment. We set the environment. And then in the while loop, we use the sample function to get a random action. We'll pass that random action to the step function. For the environment to execute that step. We get back the observation of the next state, the reward, whether the episode has been terminated or truncated, and some additional information. If the episode has been terminated or truncated, we'll end the loop and close the environment. We can use this code to establish a baseline of how much reward a random agent can get so that we can compare against a trained agent. Now let me add a reward variable here. In the loop, I'm going to accumulate the reward given. And then at the end, I'm going to print out the rewards. And we'll call this our baseline rewards. I'm going to run this code. We can see that our baseline is 21, which means within 21 actions, the pole has fallen. Now let's train our agent. Let me wrap this function and call it random agent. We'll create a new function. I'll call it train. And I'll go over to the stable baselines three documentation. On the left, I'm going to get started. I'm going to grab some of this code here and put it in my train function. I'll put the import at the top. This library comes with many reinforcement learning algorithms and they're all listed on the left. And we'll just go with the one that it suggested in the sample. This is A to C is advantage actor critic. I'm going to make a small change on render mode. During training, it's good to not render anything on the screen. This creates an instance of the A to C model. We're going to pass it the environment that we just created. Verbose tells the model to print out all the training status. MLP policy is the default neural network policy. All we need to do is call model.learn, tell it to train for 10,000 time steps it is the same as doing 10,000 actions. Now, how do we know that the agent is going to be trained within 10,000 time steps? In most cases, we don't know. There are better ways to do this, but for now, we'll just go with the more straightforward way, which is to just make a guess. I want to add one more line here. After training, I want to save the model. I can do that by calling the save function and giving it a name. And this file, cartpole underscore A2C, should show up here after training. Let's call the train function and we'll run the file. We should see the training status down here in our terminal. Okay, training is done. What we want to pay attention to is the episode average length and the episode average rewards. Average length is how many actions taken. Average reward is how much reward we received. It just happened that in this environment, the reward is given for every time step. So that's why the numbers are the same. But in other environments, they are not the same. Let me scroll back up to the top. When we first started the training, the average rewards is 23, which is consistent with our random agent, which gave us around 21. You can see over time, the average is going up. 
to 24, 27, 29, 30, and eventually at 82. Now let's run the model. I'll call it test. To test our model, we'll use some of the code that we created up here in the random agent, creating the environment. Now we need to load the model. We call a2c.load, pass it the name of the model, which was saved here as a zip file. Now we use model.predict, pass it our current state observation, pass in deterministic equal to true to make sure our model predicts the same action for the same state given. Now we'll pass that action into the step function and get back the stuff that we've seen in the random agent before. I'll also put this in a while loop. I'll accumulate the rewards, get determination flag and truncated flag. I'll print out the total rewards for our trained agent. Now let's call the test function. Okay, it was able to stay up for 80 actions. If we were to train this for much longer, it should be able to stay up indefinitely or until it gets truncated. Let me train it for 100,000 steps and see what happens. You can see the total time steps here when it gets to 100,000, this will stop. This might take a while, so I will pause the video and I'll be right back. Okay, training is done. The agent is able to reach the threshold of 500. So now we can run the test. I'm hitting F5. The agent should be able to stay up for 500 time steps before the simulation truncates itself. Congratulations, you just completed a Hello World equivalent of a RL project. Before you go, let me show you some resources and next steps. On my YouTube page, add Johnny Code, go to my playlist. Start with this playlist here, Gymnasium Deep Reinforcement Learning. If you have Windows, this video will help you install the whole Gymnasium package. I suggest that you do a few of these Q-Learning tutorials, you don't have to do all of them. This will give you a basic understanding of what's happening behind the scenes. Then you can move on to deep reinforcement learning or deep Q learning. In order to understand deep reinforcement learning, you have to understand neural networks. I have a basic video here for that. Let me go back. I'm gonna click on the Stable Baselines 3 tutorials. If you wanna continue training a few other environments with Stable Baselines 3, these videos will help you move forward. If you want a deeper understanding of deep reinforcement learning, go to my Implement Deep Q Learning playlist. If you go through this series, you will understand exactly how deep Q learning works. And this will give you the basis to understanding other algorithms. If you have a problem of your own that you wanna solve in reinforcement learning, these videos will show you how to build a gym-like environment. Also, this one, Real World Reinforcement Learning Series. This is a deeper look at how you would map your problem into a reinforcement learning problem. And then we'll go into creating the simulation environment. I talk about the action, observation, the rewards, something called action masking, which makes it so that your agent doesn't perform actions that you don't want it to. After creating the environment, we'll train it. And not only will we train it in one environment, we'll use something called a factorized environment, which creates multiple instances of the environment to train. This will help maximize your CPU usage. And also you can look at the training statistics better in something called TensorBoard, which shows the training status in graph form. All right, that's all I have for you. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe. That will really help me out.